blood slash. God is close. Dot PDF. Amen. So God is close. It's just we're so full of stuff, we can't sense him. Yeah, we're too busy to sense him. We got too much going on. Our minds are just so entertained that we feel a lot of times he's far away. But look at somebody and say, God is close. The Bible tells us that if we draw nigh to God, he will what? He will draw nigh to us. This is a promise from him that suggests that there is absolutely no time that God will ignore our advance toward him. God will look at somebody and say, God will never ignore your advance toward him. Never. You know how powerful that is? That means, I mean, you can go on a crack binge, be strung out on crack. That's the worst thing I can think of. You can be strung out on crack. And you can call on the name of the Lord. Repent. Tell him you're sorry. Get in his word. Just draw close to him. And you know what he'll do? He'll draw close to you. Amen. But the problem is, Elder, the crack. The long-lasting effects of the crack. You ain't coming back like you used to. (laughs) Yeah, you damage yourself. See, that's our problem. We suffer consequences because of the decisions that we're making. It's not God. It's not that God is not there. He's there. But, man, you done done something. Where you can barely feel the effects of him being there because you you wild out too hard. Amen. But he's all, look at somebody say he's always there. James 4 and 8 says, draw nigh to God and he will do what? That's a promise. Draw nigh to God and he will do what? Draw nigh to God and he will do what? draw nigh to you now James says now let me tell you how to draw nigh here's how you draw nigh cleanse your hands cleanse your hands ye sinners and then purify your hearts ye double minded See, a lot of times we waiting on the Holy Ghost to do this. We get in the line and we want somebody to lay hands on us. God, purify my heart. No, he tells you to do that. He told you, right? Clean your hands. Clean your hands and purify your hearts. You double-minded. That's drawing nigh to God. Any questions? Amen. It's plain and simple. Let me move on. No questions. I was just kidding. In the Old Testament, when God's people went astray, all it took was them humbling themselves and crying out to God for help. And he would raise up a deliverer, a judge, or a prophet to get them out of trouble. God was always there for his people. Amen. And he's always there for us. Amen. 2 Corinthians 7 and 14. If my people which are called by my name. Here's, here you go. If you do this. You're going to hear from me. That's what God is saying. You'll hear from God if you do this. If you humble yourselves. And pray. And seek my face. And turn from your wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. And will forgive their sins and will heal their land. That's drawing nigh. That's drawing nigh. It's not just, forgive me, Lord. Amen. You can get so used to that, it don't even mean nothing. You say it so fast, you don't even think, oh, forgive me, Lord. Everything you do. No, no. This is about changing, turning, making a different choice. Amen purifying your own heart. Even
even when he allowed them to be taken in captive taken captive to teach them a lesson God was still working through those that would draw nigh to him the Bible tells us that Daniel when he was in captivity in Babylon prayed three times a day in captivity against the wicked decree of the king when he needed help God was there amen when he needed help, the Bible tells us that he prayed three times a day. Now, Daniel didn't wait until something went down to start praying three times a day. This was his practice. He would open his window, look at the temple in Jerusalem, and pray toward that temple, knowing that one day we're going back home. One day God is going to get us out of bondage. So he was, like the old folks say, he was sending up his timbers. He was investing in the spirit so that he could help his people be freed from the bondage of Babylon. Amen. And all kinds of stuff happened. First, they put the three Hebrew boys in the lion, I mean, in the, the fiery furnace because they refused to bow down to the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Remember that? Then, then you know, God miraculously got them out. These was Daniel's boys. That, that, uh, Daniel was... Uh, they were all in charge of the affairs. The Bible said that these men had great integrity. They were good looking. They didn't have blemish, all this kind of stuff. So they were selected in Babylon to help rule Babylon by King Nebuchadnezzar. And so they had that high position. But when he erected that statue, they was like, now nah, we can't do this. He said, well, you're going to have to, we're going to have to throw you in the, in the fiery furnace. They said, well, let's go. Amen. They didn't try to, amen. They just said, let's go. Because if it's between us worshiping a false God and the fiery furnace, give me the furnace. Amen. amen. That's what some of y'all need to tell your sorority and your fraternity. If it's between me, if it's between the God of gods and a Greek God, give me the furnace. Oh, the hand clap standing out. Yeah, you got a cousin that's a, that was stepping last night with a cane. Who? Yeah, he, just stupid. Just stupid. You know you can do that at home. You don't have to do that to no false god, man. Get in that mirror and stomp. All kind of sharp stuff in the house you can use. Get that brush for the fireplace. Be in there. Just, you ain't got to do it to a false god. What are you doing? We don't serve false gods. He said, there, shall, that, there can't be any other God before you according to the Bible. He said, don't even let the name of another God come out your mouth. You can't pledge without the name of another God coming out your mouth. You got to call the name of another God. That's what a pledge is. We don't do that because the Bible said don't do it. And these men facing a fiery furnace so hot that the guys can't even put them in there. When you put the people in there, you get burned up. That's how hot it was. Dropped them in there. That happened and then he says, this, this is what got me. He says, I need somebody to interpret my dream. So all of his uh, magicians and Chaldeans, they was all like, oh yeah, yeah, okay, okay, we'll do it. Now tell us the dream. He said, well, no. Y'all tell me the dream. They was like, Bo, 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 bo. <laughs> Cause you can say anything as an interpretation, but if you really re can tell me what I dream, you're authentic. Like you the real deal. He says, y'all tell me my dream. They're like, we can't do that. Then kill all of them. He just started killing everybody. Then when they came to kill Daniel, they were like, oh, hold up. I think I can do this. Because I serve the real, true, and living God. Any dream you had, God saw it first. That's how close he is. He saw it. So he tells the man his dream, and then he gives him the interpretation. And then Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belshazzar, he, he went and got the goblets out of the temple of God in Jerusalem. And they're going to have a party and load it up with M.D., I don't know what they was drinking, but it was it was it was some old secular drink. They they having a party and they gonna just drink. You gonna really get the goblet? You gonna really get the the dishes from the temple 
of God. What an ark and everything else. The, you went in the holies of holy and got the glasses and you're going to have a banquet to false gods partying. God said, wait, that, no, you can't do this. Big old hand just came in the room and wrote on the wall, y'all in trouble. <laughs> Nobody could read it. What that say? Meany, meany, uh, 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 what does it say? When only one person here can read this. God's man, Daniel. Daniel was a teenager at the time, real young. So they went and got Daniel. Man, can you read this? And Daniel looked at it. He was like, I can read it, but you probably don't want me to. <laughs> it's not good news. And the king said, I'll put a robe on you. I'm going to give you a signet ring. I'm going to do all of these things if you can read it. Daniel said, keep your stuff. This one's, this one's on me. <laughs> <laughs> and basically it said your kingdom is divided the Medes and the, Medes and the Persians are about to take it you in trouble you gonna die you know it's just all bad news he, had, he ended up giving them the robe and all that and the Bible said that night he was murdered Belshazzar the king then Darius becomes the king so then the other guys that worked with him they were jealous because they was like now how you gonna elevate a captive from Judah that high and we're all like real Babylonians so we got to figure out a way to get Daniel out of here so let's find something on him you know that's the first thing you know they was all black it's Babylon black folk <laughs> they was black let's uh <laughs> let's how can we, what can we find on them? And the Bible said they couldn't find anything on them because his integrity was so high. You know, Daniel and Joseph were the two in the Bible that nothing bad was said about them. So Daniel, they couldn't find nothing on them. So they said, you know what? The only way we're going to get him is with his God. So let's come up with a decree that anybody that worships another God have to be cast into the lion's den and here's what they did they were so jive they went and created the decree knowing that if they presented to the king he would think that Daniel was a part of its creation he's third remember he's third in the land but they didn't go and let Daniel know so they tricked the king and the king gets it. Oh yeah, signs it. And the Bible says when David, well let, let's read it. I got it from there, I think. The Bible says that Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, so Daniel heard about it. Y'all done signed this writing. Ain't nobody asked me anything. The Bible says when the writing was signed, he went into the house and his windows being opened in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God. Some of y'all are like, yep, see, that's what I do when I get in trouble. No, 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 keep reading. As he did a four time. That means that this is just what Daniel does. So he had, he had equity with God. He didn't wait. Till he was in trouble. Can I keep preaching in here? Then these men assembled and found David praying and making supp I mean Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then the king commanded that they brought Daniel and cast him in the dens of lion. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God whom thy service, what? See, I know your reputation. And then I know what happened with the Babylon, with, with, with the three Hebrew boys, with Nebuchadnezzar. And I know what just happened with the handwriting on the wall with Belshazzar. So you do serve the real God. He said, so thy God whom thou servest continually, he's going to deliver you. Don't worry about these lions, he's going to do it. Now tell somebody don't worry about the lions. I'm like, lions are lions. God is God. We love him. We know he's great. But lions are lions and the stone was brought laid upon the mouth of the den the king sealed it and sealed the man in the den 
with the signet. So it's basically a hole in the, in the cave at the top. And then dropped Daniel in there with the lions and then they sealed it with the signet of the Lord. That purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night. He was fasting. He didn't want no instruments. Don't bring no music in here. His sleep went from him. He was really bothered by this because they had really basically tricked him. Then the king arose very early in the morning. He woke up, well, he wasn't asleep. So he just got up early in the morning and went in haste. I got to go see what happened to Daniel. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, Oh, Daniel, servant of the what? Living God. See, this is, well, let me, let me keep going. Is thy God whom thy servants how? Continually able to deliver thee from the lions? And then David, the next, I mean Daniel, the next day. This is, the, look at somebody say, this is the next day. Daniel said something. Then Daniel said unto the king, O king, live forever. My God hath sent his angel and shut the lions' mouths that they have not hurt me for as much as before him innocently was innocency was found in me and also before thee o king i have he said unto thee o king have i done no hurt why is daniel saying this i'm innocent and i ain't done nothing to you king why is he saying that daniel's smart because he knows what's gonna happen next he putting the dudes that did this out there yeah somebody gonna pay for the night I spent in this did with these lights. <laughs> then the king was exceedingly glad for him and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. Now, if I was one of the ones they commanded to get him, I'm taking off running right now. Right then. I'll take my chances with an arrow, shoot an arrow in my back because I know what's about to happen. So Daniel was taken out of the den and no, and no manner of hurt was found upon him because he believed in his God. And the king commanded and they brought those men which had accused Daniel and cast them in the den of lions. Them, their children, their wives. And the Bible said the lions had a master's degree in etology. Man, he, the lions made a man. I mean, the lions was, they had a plan. <laughs> they had a plan. They, they, they had planned this out. This angel won't let us do nothing to Daniel, boy, with some real food coming here. Here's what you do, Simba. You, you attack on that side, and here's what you do, Nala. You come and you go around and get them on the back end. This is what we gonna do. We gonna we done spent a whole night with our mouths shut. <laughs> Lions made a mastery of them and the Bible said broke all their bones in pieces or ever they came to, before they hit the bottom. Yeah. Now, what kind of lions are these? These aren't TV, these aren't Serengeti lions. These are different. The Bible said before the people hit the ground, the lions broke all their bones. Look at somebody and say, you don't mess with God's people. <laughs> Amen. But God was there the whole time. Because Daniel drew nigh to him. Can I keep going? The Bible tells us that God will never leave us. This statement suggests that he is with us always. If he will never leave us, he was with, he's with us always. Does that make sense? If he will never leave us, he's with us always. Deuteronomy 31 and 8. And the Lord, he it is that doth go before thee. He will be with thee. He will not fail thee. Neither forsake thee, 
Fear not, neither be dismayed. So he's already promised you he's going nowhere. He'll always be there. That's how close. You know how close he is? This right here. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. Look at somebody and say, God's at the door. If he's at the door, he's close. If he's knocking, he's even closer. All you got to do is let him in. This message is too plain for some people. He sent his son to represent him being with us in the flesh. Then he sent his spirit to comfort us and be with us. So we would see him manifested in our realm in the form of spiritual fruits. So people see him through us by the way we treat them. That's why I've been preaching the heart messages because if you got a stony heart and you're treating people bad, no one can see Christ in you. No one can see the Holy Spirit in you if you aren't treating people right. That's the only way they see him in you. Speaking in tongues don't do it. Hindus can speak in tongues. Folks that practice Santeria can speak in tongues. John 14 and 16 says, and I will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you for how long? How long? Forever. Forever. Abide with you forever. God is always there. Listen to me. Don't you let the devil make you feel like God has gone anywhere. If he is God, he is his word. And if he's his word, his word is true. And if his word is true, he said he will not ever leave you. Yeah, you got in trouble. That don't mean he left you. Yeah, you did something stupid. That doesn't mean he left you. Yeah, you failed. And this is the thousandth time you failed. That does not mean. He left you. You're more precious to him than that. See, many of us have abandonment issues in the natural, which spill over in the spirit realm. Somebody in the natural didn't keep up their end of the bargain, their obligation. They weren't there for us. They left us. They, they, you know, they just, they didn't do what they were supposed to do and they were important to us. So we take that, in our minds and in our hearts and we begin to feel like God would do us like that because that was the example of authority that we had our authority left us or a father left us mother left us husband whatever the case and so we get PTSD spiritually yeah post traumatic stress disorder where we believe that God would do us like a person did But he can't do that because he's already spoken what he would do. And what he said became what's going to happen because he said it and he is the word. And when the word speaks, it becomes what he said. Yeah, you're here right now because he spoke it. Let us make man in our own image and likeness. Can I keep going? He also performs great feats through us by the same spirit so that we can cast out devils, heal the sick, raise the dead, speak in other languages, etc. This is God tethering us to him between rims by his spirit. So God is tethered. He's connected to you even between rims through his spirit. That's how you can do the works of his spirit in this realm. Mark 16 and 17 these, and 8 through 18. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up servant, uh, serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover. These are all things we can do because we're tethered to God. 
so his power can flow through us from his realm into this realm. That's, look at somebody and say, that's how close he is. The realm that God is in is not far away. Look at somebody and say, the realm that God is in is not far away. I want y'all to get this. It's not far away. The Bible tells us that he is only a portal of time away from us. And you got to get my video, Destination Entropy, when I explain time and all of those kind of things. It's deep. You want to see that. That'll help explain this concept. But Stephen saw it before he died. And then the rich man saw it in hell as well. Realms are not distances away, but they are interlocked time and spaces away. Yeah. So that means God is right there. Because a realm can be right there. A different space and time can be right there. You can't see it because you have 3D vision for our time. You can't decode what's right there. <laughs> yeah, it's there. Your eyes can't see it because you can't decode it. That was taken away from us in Eden. The ability to do that. In Eden, they could do it. They could see God walking in the garden among them. They could see other beings from other realms and they lost that when they sinned now we're confined to three dimensional a, view, a three dimensional viewpoint but God is still right there he's right there yeah and if you get close enough you can feel him right there amen well it's not about feeling yes it is we're emotional beings you want to feel it sometimes Amen. It don't mean you're going to dive over three chairs. But you do want to feel his presence. Amen. Oh, I wish I was preaching to some saved folks in here. Amen. Somebody passed on my energy level. You know, I ain't had no sugar in a whole week. And right now, I'm just, I don't have the energy. You should feel better. Amen. You're going to live longer. You added, how many days it's been? You added them days back on your life. They was gone. You didn't have them no more. <laughs> the way you was eating. But Stephen saw it before he died, and the rich man saw it in hell. Realms are not distances away, but they are interlocked time and spaces away. So when God answers us or does a work for us, he can, in look at somebody say, instantly instantly push it into our realm without it traveling a long distance. Yeah. He can push it in our realm. Acts 7 and 56 says, and Stephen said, when they were stoning him, behold, I see the heavens opened, opened and the son of man standing on the right hand of God. Now if that was a distance, he wouldn't be able to see it. The way we think, you know, them old black and white movies about heaven that the black folk made? Remember the green pastures and cabin in the sky? <laughs> they going up all them stairs. Oh, I don't think I'm going to make it. They climbing all them stairs. It's a million stairs. How you going to make it? You not going to make it. I'm just going to jump off the side. That's it. Just, hey, I'm going to have to go the other way. Good gracious. Yeah, we just picture God and just it's just a long way. Long journey. When you're praying, you're looking in the outside in the clouds and trying to see. You wouldn't be able to see Jesus on the right hand of the Father with your eyes. <laughs> you sound like them folk that think the earth is flat. It's flat because I can see it. See, look, all that flatness. Bro, if you don't get something. Oh, that's so stupid. Oh, that's just dumb. Look at the horizon. See, it's just flat. <laughs> like Christopher Columbus there. It's flat. I see. 
and then pick up a cell phone. Y'all, it really is flat. Your cell phone doesn't hit all these satellites in orbit. <laughs> and you're going to trust your eyesight. You might as well get a cup and a string and call everybody. This is my smartphone. This is a, my smartphone. <laughs> My phone's made by Dixie. <laughs> yeah, but Stephen said, I see the heavens open and the son of man standing on the right hand of God. That means that when he was dying, being stoned, something opened up and he could see into another realm. Right there. And then the, the, the opposite of this, Luke 16 and 23, and in hell the rich man lifted up his eyes being in torment and seeth who? Abraham, Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And afar off don't mean afar away, it just means away from where he was. He could see it. Look at somebody and say, God is close. Man, God is close. He is close. Summary! Man, this is a good message. It should have made you excited to know how close God is. Amen. Just wait till the first of the month. That's when he seems the farthest the way. <laughs> the numbers on them bills is distance. Those are miles that God is. <laughs> That's what it feels like. You, you know, sometimes when you don't have it, sometimes when you're hurt and sometimes when different things are going on, God feels far away, especially when you done acted a donkey. Anybody ever acted a donkey and done something that they wish they had? So that's donkey. Donkey is when you knew you shouldn't do it. God told you not to do it. Strangers. At the gas station while you was pumping gas, walked up to you and said, hey, man, I don't know you, but you don't need to do this. <laughs> you still didn't hear it. You didn't hear it. The dog, when you came in, whoo, whoo. Whoo. You need to go out? No, I don't need to go out. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, and so in those moments, man, the recovery from that, and that's why we can't live like that. We can't live vicariously in sin. We can't keep falling in sin because, man, you start feeling like God is far away and he's done with you because of your own behavior. That's why you got to just act better. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> got to learn. You got to remember what that felt like the last time. But God is close. As we approach the end of all things, the devil is going to try his best to make it look like we have been abandoned by God and we have lost the fight. He is going to use the media and AI to amplify himself to appear more powerful than he really is. Through social media, politics, movies, music, etc., he is going to make it seem that we are here fighting a losing battle. And that our presence in the earth counts for nothing. Already feels like that sometimes. But he is a deceiver. And the only power he has is the power to deceive. No matter what the devil says and does in this hour, look at somebody and say, God is still with us. God is still with us. Why are you listening to the devil? I'm not, look at somebody and say, I'm not listening to the devil. God is still with us. He's still with you. Booker, God is with you. You proof of that. You are here because God is still with you. He don't break promises. How can he break a promise when he is the promise? When what he says has to happen because he is what he says. He promised.
promised to never leave us or forsake us. And I put these scriptures up here so you can just go jot them down or you can go look them up later. But he promised to never leave us or forsake us. He promised to be with us until the end of the age. He still knows all of our thoughts and all of our desires. He hears every word we speak and he moves in even closer when we are hurting, broken, and in need of comfort. He even counts the times we are sorrowful and knows the amount of tears we cry. Does this sound like a God that is far from us? No, this is a God that is right here with us in a realm that is not only adjacent to our realm, but can also pervade our realm at any time to deliver what we need from him. Remember, he is not like a man. Thank God he's not like a man. He's not like a man that will leave us. People do not leave those they love. Rather, they leave those they used for their own benefit. Anybody say they love you and leave you, they were using you. Yeah, a lot of times folks use you to feel love. There ain't nobody going to leave you if they love you. Amen. People do not leave those they love. Rather, they leave those they use for their own benefit. But God does not do this. He loves us and promised to be here for us until he comes and gets us. Amen. So he's going to be here for us until there's no more us. Romans 8 and 38. It says, for I am, this is Paul saying, I'm persuaded. This is how I'm thinking. Hope y'all are thinking like this, but this is how I'm thinking too. G, this, this, these are my thoughts, my sentiments exactly. I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Everybody stand to your feet. He's close. He's close. And he promised he won't go anywhere. But for many of us, he needs you to make the step to draw nigh. That's you. Just come on up. We're going to pray that you do that. Draw nigh. That's it. Those are the requirements. Draw nigh. Draw nigh. Draw nigh unto God. And he will draw nigh unto you. That's his promise. And I believe his promise. That's his promise. I believe what he's promised. Draw nigh. Draw nigh. Hallelujah. Draw nigh. And he'll draw nigh to you. Old folks used to say, you, you, you take one step, he'll take two. That's how close he is. So when you're coming up here, he's so close, he knows all your business. He know he already knows. He already knows. So right now, all you got to say is one simple word. Yes. Yes. Lord, I say yes. I say yes to your will, to your way. I say yes. I say yes. So just bow your heads. We say yes. Father God, this, this message has taught us that you are close. 
you're close. You're close. You've been working all alone. Because look where we are. Look where we are. Once rejected, lost, hurting, running, hiding, sinning, falling. But we're not like that anymore. We're not perfect, but we're not like that anymore because you've been working. You've been here all along. You've been opening doors. You've been closing doors. You've been bringing people in our lives. You've been taking people from our lives. You've been bringing messages to us. You've been bringing truth to us. You've been speaking direction to us. You have been taking care of us. We've been focused on how we felt. We've been focused on the hurt. We've been focused on what people did to us. We've been focused on the pain. We've been focused on our upbringing. We've been focused on what we lack. We've been focused on our money. We've been focused on our job. We've been focused on a bad relationship. We've been focused on all these things. And we've missed the fact that you're close. You've been here. You've been here. You've answered so many prayers. I've seen your hand. You've done so many great things. You've been here. You've been here. And what that means is that you're not going anywhere because you've never left. You've always been here. So God, we pray right now, help our minds to understand that you mean what you say. And you are what you say. Help us, Father God, to take our earthly, worldly understanding out of this. No matter what men and women have done to us in our lifetimes, that's not you. That's not how you move. That's not you. You don't break promises. You don't go back on your word. So God, help us right now to understand it give us understanding so that we can accept the fact that you are close and we can remember in times when we need to remember it just how close you really are when we're down when we're hurt when we're heartbroken when we've fallen when we're lost help us God to remember that you are close Hallelujah. So we say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name, we say yes. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Sing that, PJ. Hallelujah. Let's just sing it with him. Come on. I say yes. Come on. I say yes. Give us the words, PJ. Hallelujah. 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 Come on and hug somebody and say, God is close. 
Tell them, remember that God is close. On your way back to your seats, let somebody know God is closer than you think. He's closer than you know. Hallelujah. When your spirit speaks to me with my Oh,